Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my Kapok tree. I started my Kapok trees from seeds that I ordered online and they germinated in June of 2016 and the trees were growing really, really vigorously. So much so that I was taking cuttings off the top and rooting them and giving them away. And then all my original trees died. When the original trees died, I thought, well, maybe they got frost. I did have them in the poly house and it did get quite cool, but I wasn't sure. So after that, after all the original trees died, I got some more cuttings from Bonsai J to try again round two. And I made sure these ones did not get any frost on them. And then I had them in the basement for the winter and they were doing fine till about 12 degrees Celsius and then they all died again. And I thought, oh, okay, so they cannot take the cold. Uh, I've read that they recommend you keeping them at 15 degrees or above. They're a, a very tropical tree. So since then, I got another cutting off of Bonsai J. This is his last one. And it's been growing well, and I've been keeping it above 15 degrees Celsius. So it's in the plant room right now. And it's doing okay. I noticed when I brought it out that the leaves are sticky, which means there's something attacking the leaves. So I'm going to spray it with soap and water before I begin today. Get it... Uh, bug free and today I'll be repotting it into a larger pot. The kapok tree or kapok also known as the silk cotton tree is one of my favorite trees in the entire world. They get this enormous buttressed root system. They're one of the tallest trees in the rainforest. They grow to an enormous height and they get this huge umbrella canopy on them. As a bonsai, they're fairly difficult to grow. They tend to grow very vertical and upright. They're not that easy to get branching on them. Another characteristic of them that's really cool is they get thorns all over the trunk. It'll be like a rose. It gets these thorns and it looks really, really cool. So a fantastic tree in nature, a difficult tree to grow as a bonsai. I've repotted this kapok tree once. It was a cutting and it didn't have a really strong root system so I didn't do a lot of root pruning on it. I just bare rooted it, put it in bonsai soil and it's been growing since. So today I'm going to repot it into this larger pot here. I want to get those roots to start spreading out and getting that buttressed root system reminiscent of the giant kapok you see in nature. I'll show you some pictures of some ancient kapok trees and you'll see all those cool characteristics that the tree has in nature. I'm going to begin the repotting by spraying the tree down with soap and water, removing any insects off it. So here I go with the soap and water. I'll start from above and then I'll spray from underneath. That should do. I'll let that sit for a little bit and then I'll rinse it off. 
All right, now it's time to rinse the tree off. Next, I'll get all the weeds out of the pot. There's quite a few of them growing up here. I did have a small under tray under the pot and you can see all the roots that have grown. The root system on these K-Pox is quite vigorous. I am a little worried about the temperature in the greenhouse here. It's a little on the cool side. It's at 14 degrees Celsius. I definitely wouldn't want to repot this tree if the temperature in the greenhouse was any lower. I'm going to start by snipping off the roots that are growing out the drainage hole. So I'll just come in and cut those away. Otherwise it would be hard to get the tree out of the pot. Okay, that's got them all. Okay, here I go getting the tree out of the pot. Let's see how easily it comes out. It's pretty locked in there. I might have to run my my tool around, my spatula or whatever it is. I don't know what you call this. There is a little bit of a lip on this pot, so it'll make it a little harder to get out. And it's in a very coarse bonsai soil. I think this soil is from the bonsai supply. They sent me some samples to try out and I thought, oh, this is a good tree to try out that soil. In. And it's been growing quite well in this soil. Oh, it's still really hard to get out. Yeah, that lip really locks the tree in. Which is good if you have a top heavy tree, you need that lip to hold the tree in the pot. It's really good on jades, things that get very top heavy. Here it comes. Okay. It is out of the pot and you can see all the roots that have grown. That's always good. Now I'll begin raking out the root system. Lots of fine roots in the soil. And you can see it's already starting to get a bit of a buttress trunk on it. I don't really have, you know, buttress surface roots, but the trunk is thickening up at the base. Because this is a cutting, it shouldn't have a large tap root. It should be just fine feeder roots, hopefully. I'll remove that moss from the base of the trunk here. The root pruning today will also help uh, restore the balance of vigor in the roots so you don't get you know one or two really thick roots and the rest are kind of meager or fine roots. You want an even root distribution around your tree so you get those nice radial roots that are all an even thickness basically and are all nice and radial and you want all your surface roots thickening up and doing the work of feeding the tree. The taproot, you know, it provides nutrients to the tree, but it's not part of the visual design of the tree. So it's best to remove the taproot and grow your radial feeder roots out, and as they thicken up, they become nice buttress surface roots. And it's a process that takes a long time. It takes a while to get a good balanced root system. So I think there's a drainage screen in here. I'll pull it out if I can. There's a lot of roots growing through the drainage screen. I 
I noticed there's a few dry spots in the soil and that's just because the tree was at the back of the plant room and it's I water it but it's a little hard to get to so I'll definitely move it to a better position in the plant room so it gets better watering so there's the drainage screen off now so you can see this was a cutting and the cutting extends down but all my radial roots are kind of at this surface level in the soil so I think I'll probably be cutting off this big thick part of the root system or what was originally the cutting reducing it back to just the fine surface roots so it'll be quite a major operation today I'll also cut part of the top of the tree back to kind of balance it put less as uh, less of a load on the roots and then it'll slowly recover and grow at least that's the plan anyway okay so I've got the tree bare rooted so I'll clean up and then we'll come back and start the root pruning here is a look at my root system and you can see this is a cutting and the cutting was planted fairly deep in the soil and new roots grew out around the bottom of the cutting but I also got a lot of roots coming at the surface level of the soil so I'm going to bit risky but I'm going to cut off that lower part and just keep my finer roots my radial roots on the tree so I'll use the ratcheting pruners for this and I'm going to come in try and get between the roots here somewhere right about right about here so here I go a big cut coming up click click done so there's the part I cut off here's the part that remains so I would say I cut about 50% of the roots off my next step is to balance the root system I'm just combing them out and I can see that I've got a fairly thick root here that needs to be removed so I will come in with my scissors and I will prune that root off right here so here I go taking that one off I've got some roots growing down here I'm going to trim off just so the tree sits a little flatter like that there's a really long root here I can trim off one there one there kind of a profile prune to balance the vigor oh, I think that's pretty good now there's a lot of roots that aren't you know perfectly radial in that but that'll get sorted out with the next repotting I will remove this one kind of going a funny angle here I'll remove that one just so everything flows down nicely into the soil I didn't want any roots sticking up from that ugly looking leaf off okay so I think that's it that's ready to be repotted now the tree is quite top heavy so I'm going to prune it back before I repot it so it's a little more stable in the pot so I'm looking for leaves that fan outwards so I'm going to prune this trunk just above there allowing some for dieback like that this trunk line's fine this one could get pruned back there's a leaf bud here there's one up higher so I think I'm going to go low on this one to here and there's one here that's quite vigorous there's a leaf bud down here so I'm going to prune it off to here and I'm wondering if I should go even lower on some of these this one here I do have a leaf bud coming out here so I could prune a bit more off the top like that. I'll take some of these leaves that aren't looking very good off there's a few dead leaves here 
And I think, I think that's it. I think that's pruned up. The roots are pruned. I'll get the tree in the pot now. I've got some drainage screens in the bottom of the pot, so I'll add a base layer of soil. There I go. I think a little bit more. And I'm ready to plant the tree. So here is my tree. And I'll try and pick a front for the tree. I think... I'm just looking at the root base. The upper branch structure isn't really a factor at this point in time. I think somewhere about here is good. So I'll place the tree fairly central in the pot. And I've got to get a height. That's pretty good right there. So I'll make sure my roots are combed out. Get them as radial as I can. These will be my surface roots someday. Okay, that's all looking good. So I'll start filling it in with soil now. And I don't want to plant the tree too deeply because I want all the roots to grow from this point down. I don't want new roots emerging from the trunk. It's a good thing I mixed up some soil the other day. I think that's a good height in the pot. We'll see. I want it just below the lip of the pot. Now, I've got to look and see if it's planted too deeply or not. I think I could raise it up just a bit. I'll just slowly lift it as I'm working the soil into the roots. And what's left of the roots anyway. So I just want to see the base of the tree at the soil line. I don't want to go really any deeper. So I think that's good. And I'll just make sure all the soil's kind of in around the roots. Pat it down, pat it down. Make sure my tree's vertical, it looks good. My soil level is good. So I think that has got the tree planted. I'll just add a bit more soil around the base and I can always rake that away once the tree starts growing a bit. Not too much, just a little bit like that. Okay, the tree is planted, and you can see it's not really stable in the pot. It's fairly stable, but not, you know, locked in there. So I will place some stones around the base of the tree until it starts growing. Then I can remove those stones. So next, I need to water the tree. All right, here I go with the water. Give it a good soaking. You can hear the soil sucking up the water there. Sounds like Rice Krispies, a breakfast cereal. And it's starting to come out the drainage holes now. This pot, I got it from the Toronto Bonsai Society's December auction. It's an old Chinese pot. And I think it'll be a good size to grow the tree to its to its next stage of development, which should be exciting. I think it'll grow with a lot of vigor in this pot with this amount of soil. Okay, so that is watered. Here is a look at what I took off the tree today. So 
you know, a fairly large part of the root system, prune the branches back. I am going to plant these cuttings, so I'll just snip off some of the leaves, just kind of leaving the growing tip on it, like that. And I'll just stick it in the soil, and if it roots, it roots. If it doesn't, no harm done. It's always good to have a backup of your trees. Just in case, you know, the main tree dies, at least you have some cuttings to start them. Start the process once again. And, you know, that's how this tree started. The cutting off my trees. So I was glad I had a backup. So there's those cuttings planted. I'll place some stones around the main tree just to hold it in place until the roots begin to grow like that. That should be good. It's nice and stable in there. This is try number three of growing these Kapok trees. All my original seedlings died from the cold. Then I got a cutting off bonsai J and that died from the cold. And this is my third try, so I hope I have success with this one. So I'll put the plastic back on the tree, get it back in the plant room, get it warmed up, and hopefully with the next update, you'll see it growing with a lot of vigor. So that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.